I think that um, people's uh, people who come to dine, they're, they're, they're much more discerning now and, and, and their expectations are much higher. Um, they've not got as much money in their pockets, but they're willing to spend it if they think they're getting value. But they're, they're also, they're, their expectations are much higher than they've ever been. Wine is becoming much more important in our offering. Um, wine's a big growth area in the market. I mean, there's more wine drunk now than beer and other, other, other types of alcohol. So we're seeing a massive growth in that area. You know, we have to try and offer good value, good quality, wine and, and we think we've got there now with what, we, what we've got in our, in our portfolio. Stocking Bats Club was a real strange one. We were doing a murder mystery night a, f a couple of years ago. It was around the Halloween time so it all fitted together. When we were pouring and people were trying it there, there seemed to be a general consensus that this wine was something a bit different but, but very special different. It was, it, was, it was a very drinkable wine and, and people were really enjoying it. We, we then decided after that to, um, to put it on the bar as a sort of wine of the month, wine of the week um, and people were trying it without exception. People were liking it and buying it which was really unusual because normally when you have a wine of the week they try it and they say oh well yeah but I'll still go back to I'll have the Shiraz or have the Rioja or yeah it's nice but I'll have that but without exception um, people said oh yeah that's really nice we'll have a glass and we'll have the bottle uh, and from there really the, the, the rest is history we, we, we've now got customers actually coming in and asking for bat's blood um, which is really strange because it's the only wine that people do that for there are instances where we've, we've, where we've run out and, and people have come in and been really disappointed so we've had the food offering and people have come in for the bat's blood and been disappointed that we've not had the stock um, that was in the early days when we, when we were sort of buying a few bottles. But now we're, it's a permanent position on the bar and, and um, sells very, very well, which is you know, great. So there we are, that's the story of the Dovecote and Batsford, really. I guess the, the business is built on key principles, really. One, we set our stall out uh, to offer quality and premium product. Uh, two, to uh, aim for a service that's, that's exceptional. Uh, and, and three, we wanted to create something for the town that was unique, different, that nobody else was doing. And, and what's been really important for us is to make sure that giving customers a, a terrific experience is part of the package. Uh, a unique shopping experience is, is one of our, you know, one of our aims, one of our strap lines, if you like. For us, wines, uh, again, is an important part of the business. One of the early ideas was to be a cheese shop and a wine shop. Uh, we're moving towards that and we're not exactly where I, I want to be, but wine's really important. But what was also important was to be able to offer our customers uh, great wines, individually selected, uh, that they're not going to be able to buy in a shop down the high street or in one of the major multiples. Had to be different, specially selected, and ideally with a story behind it. And that's, uh, that's a great thing for us to offer. So this, uh, this chap called Ian Cunningham came into the business one day and, and asked if my name was Ben, and it wasn't, that's my son. And so he came in and took, gave me the story of Bat's Blood, the legendary wine from Transylvania. And I remember that that was about a fortnight before Halloween. Now, the label on the bottle, the term Bat's Blood, the legendary, legendary wine from Transylvania, lent itself very well to that our event in here on, uh, on, on, on Halloween. Uh, brought it in specifically for Halloween, and it's stayed ever since, and has become our best-selling wine. And that's both retail, as well as dining, we offer it on the wine list. I think we've maintained our reputation just through um, quality and service and consistency. We always strive to have really good, knowledgeable members of staff and then just just do what the customers want us to do. They, they, it's the service. If the customer wants us to do something, we, we will do it. But also, I think searching the world for quality products, and that goes hand in hand with our reputation, is that you know we just never sacrifice quality. It's very hard, you have to do an awful lot of tasting, <laughs> it's the downside of the job, here I am again. <laughs> but no, you have to keep working with everybody and you know it's such a lovely job, we're dealing with people all over the world, all different sorts of people, but we being a family business like to work with other family businesses and build up that um, sort of relationship over many years. We don't want to just cut 
here and there and buy the cheapest. We like that sort of consistency of quality. And it just shines through in a product. Bats Blood wouldn't have been a, a, an instinctive purchase. And I can remember when we first looked at it, we all go, oh, Bats Blood, mm, not sure about that. And oh, yes, I know my daughter will like that for Halloween and all those sorts of jokes. But but actually, you know what, It's it really it has surprised us. And here I am drinking it again. <laughs> it is, it, it's a jolly good drink. And we're getting people coming back into the shop asking for it now, which is great. Wine brands are difficult. I think the supermarkets are very brand driven. But I think when somebody latches onto a brand, and I suppose you can call Bats Blood a brand because it, of its very distinctive name, people do come in and ask for it. And if they can't remember it, well, you cannot forget this name, can you?